G'day guys, you have absolutely flooded my inboxes on Facebook and on YouTube and on the Discord asking me to comment on my thoughts on the situation that occurred between Matt Marasoli and Sean Naden at the Las Vegas Open. There was a little bit of drama there and people have reached out for my comments and my thoughts on the situation. Now, before we get into the video where I'm going to deep dive these thoughts, I do want to say that I have huge amounts of respect for both players and I think both players handled this situation very maturely and very, very admirably. So huge shout out to Sean Naden and Matt Marasoli. You guys did an absolutely amazing job in this very, very tricky situation. So basically what I wanna to do today is talk about the situation that occurred and also discuss some of the potential solutions that could have been reached and some of the drawbacks for each of those solutions because I think this is one of those genuine situations where there is no good solution. So we're gonna talk about all of the different potential solutions and then maybe we'll continue this conversation in the comments section below and we'll see what the community feels and have a bit of a conversation going down there. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into the video. Alrighty guys, let's talk about the situation that occurred at the LVO last weekend between Sean Naden and Matt Morisoli. Um, so, first, just a real quick disclaimer that uh, I wasn't there at the event. I was all the way across the pond in Melbourne, um, and I also wasn't able to watch this live due to the fact that I was working at the time, so I'm not 100% sure on every single detail, but I've got uh, multiple reports coming in that all tell me the same sort of stuff. So. Um, basically, there was a situation between Sean Naden and um, Matt Morisoli in one of the final rounds at the LVO. So these people were playing off essentially for a, a shot at winning the event, right? Um, and basically what had happened is uh, they were playing, they were scoring their victory points as they went along. And it was in, I believe, round two, battle round two of their game where they scored Matt Morisoli's primary incorrectly. So they basically, they put him down as receiving either a four point primary when it was supposed to be an eight, or an eight point primary when it was supposed to be a 12, something like that, either way. Uh, and this game was fully streamed as well. So this is an important component of the story. Um, so what happened is basically they've, they've scored it up incorrectly. Like they're just, you know, playing the game as normal. They're scoring it as normal. They've Booth going, oh yeah, cool, you get a four point primary this turn, and they're like, yep, yep, cool, cool. And they write down the four points, right? When they should have wrote down an eight. Um, and neither of them noticed this, and they just continued to play the game as if everything was fine, right? And these sorts of things happen, these sorts of mistakes where, you, you know, you record something incorrectly, you know, it shit happens, right? Um, and then basically it was, it was noticed on the stream, people watching the stream game noticed that this score was inaccurate. And as a result, there's people like blowing up the comments on the stream going, oh, this is wrong, you've made a mistake, but puts the uh, the streamers in an interesting position where they have to decide whether or not it's their responsibility to correct that mistake. Because obviously the streamers are not judges, you know, they're not supposed to intervene, they're not supposed to interact with the game state at all. So the streamers are in an interesting position on whether or not they should intervene. Um, Anyway, so then eventually it was brought to the player's attention that this had happened. So I'm not sure exactly when, whether or not it was brought to their attention during the last few battle rounds, or whether it was after the event when they were calculating the scores and summing up what victory points each other got. I'm not 100% sure on the timing, uh, but basically it was brought to their attention that this had been done incorrectly, and it was realised that if they had scored this correctly, Matt Morisoli would win the game, but because they didn't score it correctly, Sean Naden won the game. So then they were put into a very, very interesting ethical scenario where they need to decide how to resolve this situation where essentially there's two potential outcomes, there's only two, there's no real way to go around it. Option one is they correct the scores and Matt Morisoli wins, 
and sort of steals the win out of underneath Sean Naden, or they leave the scores as they are, don't change them, and Sean Naden wins, stealing the win from Morisoli, who technically did all of the correct things needed to do to win the game. So it's a shit situation, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the make the argument for both, because uh, it's a, like I said, it's a really tricky one, and I can totally see like an argument for correcting the scores, and I can also see an argument for leaving the scores. And I also just want to say at this point, like a huge congratulations to both players. They handled this situation like gentlemen, uh, and it's really inspiring to see that sort of behaviour at that top level at such a fucking like intense part of the event, you know, like to see that behavior is so inspiring for those who, you know, they claim tournament players are all win at all cost cheaters and blah, 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 you know, and to see people in that position perform in such a gentlemanly manner is really inspiring. So huge amounts of respect to both Sean and Matt Morisoli for the way they handled the situation. I know I probably wouldn't have handled it as well, so yeah, I tip my hat to them. They did a fantastic job. Um, but yeah, so let's go through the two arguments. So argument one is that, well, you know, Matt Morisoli did score those points. They may not have recorded it correctly, but he did do the thing. Like, he did control that objective. It's provable by looking back on the stream, he did control that objective. So therefore, they should have res recorded those scores. And if they've made a mistake, this is a correctable mistake, you know? It's not like shooting with something and, you know, thinking it has fucking ten attacks when it actually only has six, and you've resolved them and now you've moved on, and, like, you, and now it's, you know, two turns later and you realise when you go to shoot it again, oh, shit, I fired the wrong profile or something like that. Like, that's a, that's a mistake that's very difficult to correct, because you don't know what the outcome would have been had it been different. This is not one of those types of mistakes. This is a very, very correctable mistake. You just go, oh, okay, cool. I see what we've done. We have done this wrong, so let's fix it. Let's just fix it, right? Not hard. So there's an argument to be made that it should have been done. It should have been fixed, because it is fixable. Um, and it's both players' responsibility to make sure that the scores are recorded accurately. So if they are recorded inaccurately, well, it should be fixed, and it's both players' responsibility, and therefore both players have to accept the consequences of scores being changed when the scores were entered inaccurately, because both players are responsible for maintaining those scores. So this isn't an accusation of like any wrongdoing on anybody's part, but I'm, you know, you could, you could very easily make the argument that it's both players' responsibility to record that accurately. Therefore, both players must be prepared to accept the consequences for recording it inaccurately. Whether that's in their favour or goes against them, either way, if you're responsible for something and you fall short on that responsibility, well, then you must accept the consequences. So... That's the argument for why they should have um, corrected the scores and given Morisoli the win, even though the whole time Sean Naden thought that he was going to get the win, right? So that's one argument. The argument against that is that, it, as, as we said, it's both players' responsibility to keep those scores accurate, right? So when they have entered the scores inaccurately, right... Then Sean Naden's able to then make decisions in the game based on the scores. So, for example, if that meant that Sean Naden was in front and he was winning, right, based on the scores that they had entered, well, he can make decisions based off that information. He can go, okay, cool. If I'm in front by, say, four, four or five points, I don't need to make big risky plays. I can play conservatively and I can make sure that I use my resources in, in reliable and predictable ways to make sure that I just keep the game flow the way it is because I'm currently in front. I don't need to do anything to change up the tempo of the game. I don't need to change up the you know trajectory of this game because the trajectory is in my favor. So Sean could have very easily just gone, okay, cool, I'm in front. I'm not going to do anything risky. Whereas 
if that information had been recorded correctly, Sean would have been like, okay, I'm behind, so I need to do something to change that. So he would have been searching for opportunities to change the scores by making different decisions in those later turns. He would have been, you know, potentially he'd split his attacks across multiple units because he needs to spike high on multiple things in order to achieve those results. You know, maybe he would go for some longer charges, some riskier charges, in order to get onto an objective to deny primary points. But because he knew he was in front, or thought he was in front, he didn't make those risky plays because it wasn't as important to flip those objectives because it was okay with Matt scoring some points because as long as Sean was continuing to score equal or more, he would remain in, in front, right? So Sean was making decisions during the game based on the score. So, and as it's both players' responsibility to make sure that that score is accurate, it's a little unfair for Matt Morisoli to then like claim that he should that that score should be changed, you know, because, well, why should we change it? You're you're responsible for recording the scores as much as Sean was. You failed to record it accurately, and now you must accept the consequences of that, right? Which is that you lost a game that you could have won had you recorded the scores properly. So, that's a really interesting take on it as well. Is that you know, it's it's. If, if, if you record the scores inaccurately and that results in you losing, well, you kind of have to accept it. You have to accept that your, the consequences of you failing to meet that responsibility, which is to record the scores accurately, that means that you have to accept that loss, right? But the tricky thing is, is I think both of those arguments are both very valid arguments, right? So how do you resolve this as a, as a TO, as a judge? What do you do? Uh, so at this stage, I want you guys to jump in the comments below and let me know what you would do in that situation. Do you think they should have corrected the scores, which would have resulted in Matt Marasoli taking the win? Or do you think they should have left the scores and given Sean Naden the win? Uh, do you think that be, given that it's both players' responsibility, they both must accept the consequences, but in which this situation, only one of them can accept the consequences because if you do it one way, Solly has to accept his loss, and if you do it the other way, Naden has to accept his loss. So who should be the one to accept that responsibility is ultimately the question. I don't think anybody's denying that somebody has to take the loss here, but who should is the interesting question. Um, and then while, while you guys are typing that out, let's talk about what they ended up doing, which is part of what I was saying about how them handling it so gentlemanly, uh, is they ended up deciding to just roll off, and the winner wins the game, which I think is so fucking funny, um, and basically they had this on the, they live-streamed the roll-off as well, um, Adam Camilleri was there filming. Uh, which is amazing to have another Aussie involved in the situation. Um, but uh, basically they rolled off to see who would win because they both sort of acknowledged that either way, somebody's getting unfair treatment here, you know. Like, if, 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 if they give the win to Soli, that's unfair because Naden was making decisions that he would have made differently had he had the information. So he was provided incorrect information and therefore it's unfair for him to, you know, to lose. But Soli, at the same time, it would be unfair for Soli to take the loss because he actually did the things that are required to win the game. He actually achieved the objectives and therefore he actually did win. It's just a, you know, a typo, essentially. Um, so what they essentially did is they rolled off for it, both accepting that, you know, the situation as for what it was, which is I think is an absolute gentlemanly thing to do. Um, and then they rolled, they both rolled like a four. So this is like, <laughs> this is live on camera, real exciting. Um, they both rolled a four, so they had to re-roll, and uh, Sean Naden ended up taking that, that win. Um, and as a result, yeah, they, uh, they basically put through the win for Sean Naden, they shook hands, uh, and they walked away. Uh, I think this is probably is one of the best ways to handle the situation, because... It's, it's, it's very clear, very apparent to me that somebody was going to get an unfair 
end of the stick here uh, and it's kind of hard to attribute blame or fault to either individual so when you've got a situation where what you know somebody's going to get you know negative consequences for this but neither of them are, res are uniquely responsible you know because they're kind of both responsible for the situation well it would be unfair to make a decision on who suffers the consequences you know because they, they should in theory both suffer the consequences um, so the third argument I guess could have been to call it a draw right um, the problem I guess is that at that stage of the game they, they sort of couldn't enter draws because it was to trying to figure out who was going to go undefeated into the grand final. So they actually shouldn't, they just sort of can't call it a draw. Um, and that brings into the next thing, which is uh, I'm not 100% sure on all of the details on this, but people brought this up on the stream game as well, was that they actually incorrectly recorded Sean Naden's uh, No Prisoners score. So the score that Matt Morisoli achieved by killing Sean Naden's models. This was recorded inaccurately as well. And basically, the, the way that they recorded these was they uh, Sean said how many wounds were in his army total, and then at the end of the game, they just looked at how many wounds were left on the table, subtracted that from that initial total, and then that was the score that Matt Morisoli entered. The problem is, is that that number that Sean provided at the start of the game was not accurate. It was like, I can't remember the numbers specifically, but it was like he said something like he had 139 wounds or something like that, when in fact he had 140 something wounds, right? Um, and that means that Matt Morisoli would have achieved an additional victory point, which would have made the game, even with the primary being scored incorrectly, that would have made the game a draw. So even take the whole primary situation, the whole the things we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes, take that off the table. There's a secondary error in scores here where they've put Matt Morisoli down as achieving, like, say, a 13 for no prisoners or whatever it was. I don't remember the specifics, but, like, say, a 13 for no prisoners. They've given him that score when, in fact, he did actually achieve 14 victory points for no prisoners. And as a result, if you enter that 14, it becomes a draw. And then I believe they do a count back to see who wins because they need to isolate a single winner for the grand final. So they do a count back and basically they then go off primary. And so I think it was primary and then Soli was ahead on primary. So even though they got the same victory points, because they need to isolate a single winner, they then go, okay, cool. You got the same total victory points, but who got more primary than the other person? And then they basically enter that person as having won. Um, so, as a result, there's now two situations where scores have been recorded inaccurately, and both of those situations go against Matt Morisoli and in favour for Sean Naden. And now this is where it gets a little bit more squirrely. So, if there's two situations, well then... I think it becomes much more reasonable to go, well, maybe we put one in favour of Soli and the other in favour of Naden, and that's fair, right? And if you did that, Soli would win. And it doesn't matter which one of the two you put in favour of who, because, like, one of them obviously primary being worth four or five victory points, depending on the you know, situation, uh, and the no prisoners only being worth one. So even if so, I was like, you know what, I'll give you those four-point primary, but I'm taking my one-point no prisoners, then Soli still wins the game. So, yeah, that, that, that's uh, a bit more of a concerning situation, I, in my opinion, because um, there's a few things here where it's whilst it's both players' responsibility to record those scores accurately, it's the, pl the player who is... Um, the target of no prisoners is responsible for providing accurate information on how many points they give up, right? So, and this is something that, that and, and Sean Naden was running orcs, right? So he had a whole ton of boys. He had a lot of bodies on the table. So he would have, he would have very good information on how many no prisoners he gives up. You know, most people, when they're writing their list, 
you write it and you, you realize, oh, hang on, if I do this, people can get a 15 out of me for no prisoners. So you reduce your squad sizes or you reduce the number of squads in your army in order to lower that score. I know it's probably easier to conceptualize with bring it down. I mean, you know, everybody knows if you bring, you know, seven or eight tanks, people are just going to farm bring it down points off you. So what you do is you intentionally make sure that you're only bringing five tanks, right? And then you you, you tell your opponent at the start of the game, oh, if you take bring it down, you're only going to get 10 points out of me. You know that. You wrote that into your list. So it's a little concerning that, you know, at that level of the game, this type of mistake is being made. This, to me, is a much more concerning mistake than the, um, you know, the scoring of the primary. Now, I'm, I'm by absolutely no means accusing anybody of any intentional wrongdoing here. Uh, it's, you know, by, all, by all regards, this is a genuine mistake. This is not an accusation of cheating or anything like that. Not at all. Um, however, it is a, even if it is a genuine mistake, it's a pretty big one, right? Like, it's a pretty big mistake to accidentally or unintentionally provide your opponent with inaccurate information. Um, and also, I would argue that it's a pretty big mistake on Matt Morisoli's side as well, is that if your game does come down to the wire like that, and it's within one point, surely you double, triple check all of those scores, and you go, well, hang on, how many no prisoners do you give up? You know, are you sure you only give up 13? Are you sure it's not 14? You know, like, you, you, sh you both players, again, have the responsibility to make sure that all of this stuff is done accurately and above board. So, again, it's, that's, it's quite interesting to see these sorts of mistakes being made on those top tables. And especially this was like the fucking 7th or eight, maybe even 8th. I think it was the 7th game of the event. So, Sean has played this... You know, and a lot of people would have been taking no prisoners into him because he's, yeah, it was an orc army. They give up a lot of victory points, right? So, he would have taken this secondary several times. So... Did he make those mistakes in the other games? I don't know. I can't, I'm not going to comment on that because obviously I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's it's concerning that at this stage of the event he doesn't have that answer clearly locked in his head, you know. Um, you should, you like, at that stage he shouldn't be counting them at the start of the battle round, at the start of the game, you know. You should already know before you even get to the table how many victory points do I give up for no prisoners. That's something you should be very intimately aware of. So that, that I sort of think, adds an extra layer of complexity to this situation. And, and with this new information, I actually think Matt Morisoli was robbed. Uh, not intentionally, but, you know, th this situation was unfair to Matt Morisoli. You know, that's just how I see it. So... Either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see if you guys have any further information, if anybody happens to know them, uh, know the, the, you know, the particulars of the situation. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, and if you'd like to see me get one of these guys, or maybe even both of these guys, on the channel for an interview or a podcast, let me know, and uh, I'll see what I can do. They're both very busy boys, and I didn't want to hassle them because they're probably unwinding from such a huge epic event. So I didn't want to hassle them too soon. Uh, but I also wanted to get this conversation started um, while the, you know while the topic is still relevant because it did just occur. So yeah, with that being said, thanks for tuning in, guys, um, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Alrighty, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please like, subscribe, comment, all that good shit. If you want to get a shirt like this, you can hit up my Teespring account where you can pick them up. You can also pick up neoprene objective markers. And I'm also doing Patreon exclusive dice over on my Patreon. So if any of that sort of stuff interests you and you want to show your support for the channel, that's a fantastic way to do it. So with that being said, I'm going to cut it here. Thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, the Black God!